Hello, today we're doing a little get ready with me. You guys asked me some questions over on Instagram. I asked you to leave me some juicy ones and you definitely did. I also asked you on YouTube which palette I should use today and you guys picked Nabla side by side, which I wasn't expecting, but I also haven't used this in a while. So I think this will be fun. Nice pick. Um, let's jump into the get ready with me. Okay, the first question was, am I regretting the bangs? Um. It's like a yes and a no. If you missed the videos that went up last week, you did see the bangs in a couple of them. Um, they're still here. I just kind of have them tucked away right now because obviously I can't really have them in my face at this moment. But I really tried to cut them wispy enough that I could hide them away if I didn't want them to be bangs and I could still have them be a little bit longer. But I knew going into it, like bangs are probably not for people with a front cowlick and I have a front cowlick. So... They're just, I like them when they lay well. I think they're so cute then, but I feel like they only wanna lay well 25% of the time. So 75% of the time, they're driving me nuts. Okay, for foundation, let's use this one again. I used this when I did my full face of Sephora bestsellers. This is the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. I have mine in the shade 1.5. Honestly, normally I'm not a huge fan of this foundation, but I really loved the way it looked in that video. So I'm like, maybe I need to start giving it some more chances. So we'll use this one again today. Okay, this question, we're getting right into the juicy ones. I was asked if I've ever been sent a product for an ad and it has been bad. And yes, this actually just happened. Like just yesterday, I responded saying I was no longer interested in the partnership. I recently got a manager, well, like an agent, and she helps coordinate any of my sponsorships. So I held off getting an agent for a long time, but I'm, I'm so far I'm enjoying it because it kind of just takes some of that like negotiation and just some of that admin stuff off of my plate and someone else can do it for me. And when a company will reach out, maybe wants to partner with me, if I haven't used their products before, I always request that they send them to me so I can test it out and see if it would be a good fit or not. And recently there was a brand, it's not like a huge, huge brand, but I do feel like I've seen it a lot on social media. And I personally had not tried the brand yet, but they were interested in partnering. So they sent over some products for me to test out and I tried them for a couple of weeks. And just yesterday, I let my agent know I'm actually not interested in moving forward because I didn't really like the products that much. They weren't bad, but they weren't impressive enough for me to like to become new favorites they weren't products that i like wanted to do a video about you know and so she was like you know no worries i'll just let them know if you're not interested and that's that i was asked if i've ever considered quitting youtube because of stress money demotivation or just wanting a stable job and i i've absolutely thought about this i wouldn't say i've thought by the way i feel like I, there's no more foundation here i'm just tapping it in these days i will just tap in my foundation for so long because I just feel like you get a better finish that way. But I haven't had these thoughts at all recently. I mean, knock on wood, but I've been in like a good place with YouTube recently. But there have been times in the past where I've thought, you know, maybe this isn't worth it. And I especially had these thoughts shortly after moving to New York. I've lived here for a little over a year and a half. And when I first moved here, I was like, you know what? I might just have to get a full-time not internet job that is more stable because New York is very expensive. I was stressed out. I I remember at that time, my videos weren't really performing the way I wanted them to. And that's the thing with social media, it really ebbs and flows. And there can be times where your content is doing really well. And then there are times when your content is not doing well. And the amount of money that you make will be reflected in that. So it's not stable at all. And that in itself can be stressful. But I do feel like I've gotten to a point with it that I am a lot more comfortable now. And I don't have those thoughts. And I think that there are so many pros to this job that right now are outweighing some of that instability. Okay, you guys really had some really great questions this time. And this one had me thinking so much. I was like, wow, this would be a great journal entry to really dissect this one. But I was asked, what do you think your life would be like right now if you stayed with your ex? And I'm assuming she's referring to my ex that I lived with. So if you guys are new here, um, 
before I moved to New York, when I was living in Michigan, I lived with my ex-boyfriend for three years. We were together for almost five years. So it was a pretty long-term relationship. Things were obviously pretty serious. We had animals together and leaving that relationship was incredibly hard. But to answer this question, it really got me thinking like, what would my life look like if we were still together? And I think it would look the same, but I don't mean it would look the same that it does now. It would look the same that it did then. Like I really think we would probably still be living. I don't know why I tapped this off. It's a cream product, but we would probably still be living in that same apartment. I think like just so much of my life would not have evolved as much had I remained in that relationship. I feel like I've grown so much after I had the strength to leave that relationship. I grew so much personally. I moved to the city I've been wanting to live in for so long. And this really was like the best case for both of us. And sometimes you're in a situation where neither of you are really growing together. And I feel like leaving that relationship was really necessary for both of us. What brand do I think is going out of business next? I kind of was like, do I include this? Because it almost feels a little bit, I don't know, it feels negative or even mean to just gossip about like what brand I think is probably not doing well. But, you know, I'll preface this by saying I have no idea what the numbers look like behind the scenes. There could be brands that we perceive as struggling that are actually doing just fine and vice versa. But if I had to guess, I've had my eye on the balm lately. They really haven't launched anything new in a bit. They haven't even been very active on their social media accounts. They're, the only retailer they were sold at for a while there was Kohl's and now they no longer are at Kohl's. I'm pretty sure that has more to do with the Kohl's Sephora partnership because the balm is not a Sephora brand. But I, I'm just gonna say I wouldn't be surprised to see the balm kind of like subtly fade out which does make me sad because i feel like there's potential there for them to have this big comeback moment and to be a very buzzed about brand again but i just don't know if i see that happening because i don't really see anything happening at the balm right now Ooh, i was asked if i've considered cutting my hair short first of all i whenever i'll do like from another okay you can't really see much of my self in frame right now i mean granted we're doing we're, we're doing makeup, so I'm pretty up close. But even when I'm further back, you don't see much of my hair, but it is very long. It goes down like a bit past my chest. Like, I mean, not to my belly button, but like it's pretty long. And I've had long hair like most of my life. I would say, by the way, we're gonna use this Milani blush slash highlight. I'm gonna kind of use it as both. But I've had long hair for most of my life. I feel like if you... If you've like always had long hair, it almost becomes like part of your identity and you can't like picture yourself without long hair. And that's how I feel. Like I don't necessarily feel like myself with short hair, but I have had short hair before. Not that short, but if you guys have been here for a minute, you might remember it was, I think it was 2019. Um, it was like right at my shoulders. I liked that. I actually did think it was really fun, but... I don't know. I do just really love long hair. I like how many more things I can do with long hair. Like I like doing different braided hairstyles or different updos or even like different types of blowouts or curls. There's, I mean, there's fun things you can do with any hairstyle, but personally, I just really love long hair. Though I do think at some point in my life, I probably will have short hair again, but I don't think anytime soon. Okay, this one is not juicy, but it is hard, okay? The question is, F. Mary Kill Lip Liner Mascara Highlighter. Um, one of those is easy and the other two are hard. I'm gonna powder with my Kosas Cloud Set, but the easy one will kill highlighter. I would be fine not using highlighter again. I mean, I would miss it a little bit, but that one is not as devastating to me as the other two. I'm like, mascara and lip liner, you're gonna make me pick one or the other? Um, I think a lot of people would say Mary Mascara F lip liner, but I'm actually going to say the opposite. I, these days, I have even been liking 
just like a no mascara look, like just doing my face makeup and then maybe like a brown shadow on the eyes, but no mascara. I think that can still be really pretty, but I love lip liner. So I'm gonna marry lip liner. Okay, lots of lots of questions about dating life updates. The update is that there is no update. I would say just like right now, I am not actively looking for something today. I'm not like on the apps or anything. I'm not um, like speed dating or something though. I do want to try speed dating. I've seen some like speed dating activities near me and I'm like, I think that would be such a fun bucket list thing to do. I'm sure it might be a little bit uncomfortable, but I just want to do it to say I've done it. <laughs> but in terms of actively looking for someone, I'm not doing that right now, but I am under the mindset of like, if I meet someone, if I'm out and I meet someone, I'm not not pursuing it, but I'm just, it's not my focus right now, I'll say. Okay, we're gonna do my second layer of bronzer. First we did cream bronzer, now we're gonna do powder. These are like the, the, the holy grails for me, you know? First we did the Makeup Revolution cream bronzer, now we're gonna do the Fenty. Either of these are beautiful on their own, they're also beautiful together. So that's what we'll do today. And this question I have a lot to say about. So the question is, what do you think about the de-influencing trend? And if you're unfamiliar, I would say this is gaining a lot of popularity on TikTok in particular, but I have seen it spill over to other platforms. I've also read news articles about this. In general, this has just been a really big topic of conversation, the idea of de-influencing. And as a concept, I love it. I love the idea of being more mindful about our consumption, but I, for me, the way that this de-influencing trend has evolved from the focus on conscious consumption to simply just sharing negative reviews of products kind of has me side-eyeing it a little bit because what I've noticed is a lot of these de-influencing videos I'll watch, people are just like, de-influencing you on the Fenty bronzer. This didn't work for me de-influencing you on the Kosas powder. This looked dry, which neither of those statements are true in my opinion. I love both these products, but I think so much of the de-influencing conversation is now surrounded around just like negative reviews on products, which I do think can be helpful to hear a range of opinions on different products before you purchase them. But I think at its essence, de-influencing is supposed to be about a mindful approach to buying products. And I would almost rather see these videos say, hey, de-influencing you on this Fenty bronzer. It's an incredible bronzer, but you probably already have a bronzer at home that you could maybe use instead that might give you a similar effect. Like for me, that's what I want from de-influencing. And I think of the de-influencing trend as something so parallel to what we've watched on YouTube gonna go in with a little more powder. I feel like I'm still really shiny, but if you guys remember the like Kimberly Clark anti-hauls, it's, it's so fascinating, but also predictable to watch the way beauty TikTok is evolving because it's really happening at a parallel timeline to the pace that we watch things evolve on YouTube in the beauty space. Like, Everything has played out in such a predictable way with this de-influencing trend, really mimicking what we saw with the anti-haul trend on beauty YouTube. But even before that, like the, the buildup of you need to buy this, you need everything language in reviews, we watched that happen on YouTube. People got fed up of it. That led to the anti-hauls, that led to more conscious consumption. You know, it's a cycle. So we watched it all happen on that platform. We're watching it unfold on this platform. And it's just so interesting to observe it because it's so predictable. But th those are my thoughts on the de-influencing trend. I think a lot of people are hopping on it because it's trendy and those videos are doing well right now. But... I don't necessarily think, by the way, this is like, this is the old formula for this. Too Faced still makes these little heart blushes, but I don't even think they have this color anymore because they like discontinue them and relaunch them. So this one is like old, old, old. I, I, I would just love to see more, I guess even just nuance when people discuss de-influencing. And I would love to hear just more conversation about 
what it is. Instead of just saying these products are bad, I wanna hear people say, hey, this is why reviews tend to be so sensationalized. It's not necessarily because these products are that phenomenal, it's that that style of filming is more likely to result in higher views than if someone were to just come on camera and be like, hey, this blush is pretty good. No, they have to come on and be like, this is the best blush of your life. If you don't get this, you're gonna miss out. You know, I would just love to see that conversation evolve a bit more from where it's at now. Like I like the idea of it, but let's expand on it. I've really been into peachy blush lately. And so that's why I kind of did this combo of like the Luminoso underneath because this Luminoso blush from Milani, they call it a blush, but I would say it's, it's really, really light to be a blush. I would actually say it would be a better product as a highlight on a medium skin tone. I mean, maybe even a deeper skin tone because it is a pretty sheer formula. It doesn't have like a super noticeable base to it, but as a blush, it's so subtle. Even on someone like myself, that's really fair. I still think it's so subtle that I have to go over it with something else, but I still like doing that because it gives you this really pretty glow underneath it. Okay, we might come back for some more blush later, but we're going to use the side-by-side -side palette from Nabla. I was really surprised that you guys voted for this. I don't know why. I normally I'm pretty good at guessing when I put out a poll and I have a good idea typically of the palette that you guys are going to pick. But when this got the most votes, I was like, hmm, that's not what I was expecting. So let me put on some eyeshadow primer and we'll dig in. Okay, while we blend this out a bit, I was asked, how do you know that a person just isn't right for you? And before I answer this one, I do wanna start off by saying, I'm always skeptical of giving or receiving dating advice as just a person on the internet, because I think so often people give and receive really bad dating advice. And it's not that the advice itself is bad, it's just that we're all so different that so many things just aren't going to apply to everyone. Like things aren't always one size fits all like that. And I think a lot of times it comes down to having to consider yourself, like what, what is your attachment style when you're in relationships? Are you someone that stays too long or are you someone that finds yourself normally like running really quickly, especially if something does start to feel too close or too vulnerable? Like how do you normally react to that? What are you looking for in a relationship? What dynamic do you want with your partner? You know, because we're all so different, I think it's really hard to give one size fits all dating advice. So I really wanted to preface my answer to this with that information and i will say over the years i've had to almost just like stop taking taking dating advice from people because it's not always relevant to you but to answer this question from my perspective how do you know when a person isn't right for you not always but normally if you're at the point that you're asking this question you probably know the answer and I say this as someone coming from the perspective of I typically stay with someone for too long. I give someone too many chances. I talk myself back into things that I know aren't right for me. And so I know when I find myself asking this question, like hmm, maybe they're not right for me. It's because I already know the answer to that. And then I'm wanting to almost like affirm my own thoughts by asking my friends like, hmm, what do you think of this when I already know what I think, but maybe I just don't want to believe it myself. Okay, I had to pause for a bit because my radiator came on, but now we're going to get into one I've been getting a lot, and this is your opinion on mascara gate and similar situations. So if you're not familiar with mascara gate, this was a big scandal that happened for probably the biggest or one of the biggest beauty content creators on TikTok sharing a fake review of mascara. So first let's, let's go on to the next step in the eye so we can do that. Hmm. I feel like let's just start building up the outer corner a little bit with halftime and then I'll probably build from there with maybe a little bit of burnt sienna just to start like building up a little bit of depth. How many times did I just say build? Okay, so 
Um, again, to kind of walk you through the situation a bit, if you're not familiar, she posted a sponsored review of a mascara. Well, first of all, let me start by saying the sponsorship was very subtly disclosed. I think technically to FTC standards, she did put that it was partnered and she did put partner on the screen, but it was in a very subtle way that you almost wouldn't notice it. And this is a critique I have so often with short form content, not just TikTok, just short form content in general. The disclosure is not always that noticeable, which I mean, FTC guidelines do say that it has to be like conspicuous, like people need to know that it's sponsored, but there are different guidelines on short form content like that, where sometimes they can just say, you know, partner, just because the video is so short, there's not always time to really explain that partnership, but it is something that I will say as a creator really frustrates me when I see non-disclosed sponsorships. But again, like I said, I'm not surprised because we've watched everything on TikTok unfold the same way we did on Instagram or on, well, Instagram too, but I meant to say YouTube, where I think at this point, YouTube creators are very good for the most part about disclosing their sponsorships, but that wasn't always the case in the beginning. And we're seeing that happen on TikTok. As a creator, whenever, I, when I'm able to do a sponsorship with a brand, I'm so excited about it that I want to make it so clear in the video. I say it, I put it in the description box. I put it in the description box twice. I put it at the top, I put it at the bottom. I say it in the video and I write it on the screen. There is no question that there is a paid promotion in this ad. Oh, and I click the paid promotion box. Like there should be no question for anyone. That's how you're supposed to disclose it. But right from the start, her video, while she technically did disclose it, it, it wasn't that obvious. And so, in the video, she's using this mascara and allegedly, you know, we can't really confirm this, though I would assume this is what happened based on what I saw with my own eyes. It appears that she then, let's go in with this shade a little bit too, applies fake eyelashes over top and then says, wow, this looks like I'm wearing fake eyelashes. I'm like, well, of course it does because you are, but she denied it even in the comments when people started to ask, hey girl, you wearing a set of strip lashes she's like no i would never be able to do that on this video okay here's my thoughts on mascara gate now that we've had the quick rundown i have so many thoughts honestly i debated doing like a whole video about it when it happened but i was like no just don't get involved but i obviously i'm frustrated with the creator because what she did was incredibly unethical she lied and i know i've heard a lot of people say you know that's just how advertisements go like if you watch a mascara commercial on television they put on fake eyelashes sure but it's written it's in fine print that fake eyelashes are used or it is enhanced or it has been altered whereas in this video not only did she not do that she also denied wearing fake eyelashes I feel like I'm looking so shiny right now. So let's do a little bit of this. Um, this is Fenty's, like the thing that Rihanna used at the Super Bowl, the Invisimat powder. But even beyond that, even behind the fact that it's unethical, one piece of the conversation that I don't think we've heard enough about is the role that L'Oreal played in this because this was a sponsored ad from L'Oreal. And the way that these partnerships work you don't just like film the video and post it. This has to be sent to the brand for approval. So it went through multiple eyes at L'Oreal and she got the green light to, yep, looks good, go ahead and post it. Um, I think I'm gonna do a wing. I'll mix together the, the shade Tempera and then Untitled, like these two will do a little combo. And I don't know. I would like to think the best in everyone and assume that whoever watched this at L'Oreal maybe didn't pay close enough attention and didn't realize, oh yeah, it looks like she's wearing fake eyelashes. But L'Oreal did approve this video, you know? And I, I think that the interesting part to me is that the only person that seems to have lost credibility here is that creator 
but not no one seems to be that upset with L'Oreal, even though I believe they're also at fault here. And yet this has actually played out so well for them because that mascara, I, I wanna say I heard it sold out at a few retailers. I've seen reviews of it everywhere. And then what ended up happening was so many creators purchased that mascara to review and compare their experience to the fake review, which ultimately just created more buzz for the mascara in general. I also know a lot of people were upset that this creator didn't speak about it and didn't admit to it. For that piece of this, I, I'm going to assume that legally she can't. There are a lot of clauses in sponsored contracts, so I don't think it's as easy for her to just come on camera and be like, hey, I lied, you know? So while I'm disappointed that it wasn't addressed, I recognize that it probably can't be addressed. It only takes a couple of big creators being shady and unethical with partnerships to reflect poorly on everyone. And it does frustrate me so much knowing that I have so many peers in this community that are very particular about brands that they will and will not partner with that would never post a shady fake sponsorship and yet everyone loses credibility when someone that big does something so shady okay for the lid color i'm trying to decide if i want to do like an all matte look or a little bit of shimmer let's do a little bit of this shade body and soul it's a little crumbly so i'm going to try to even tap off my finger and just tap a little bit of that on i want like a really subtle kind of scattered look Okay, I was also asked the best things to do in Michigan slash Detroit. I feel like I get these questions a lot too. Um, I would say in Detroit, the Detroit Institute of Art is beautiful. I, I, I love the DIA. For lip liner, I'm going to use this Essence lip liner in the shade Soft Beige. And in Michigan, Sleeping Bear Dunes. I love Sleeping Bear Dunes. I think just any of the great lakes in general but especially lake michigan okay we did a little bit of lip liner and now wait for it this is this sparkle lip from catrice you saw me reviewing this in friday's video it's really not that sparkly but it gives you a little bit so we'll apply this all right i really like this eyeshadow look i need to play with that palette more but thank you for leaving me your questions i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you in my next one bye